Today I'm going to be showing you how to get retro game emulation working as well as possible on the Apple Silicon or Intel Max. We're going to be installing a front-end emulator called OpenMU and this basically has a very intuitive interface to drag and drop ROMs and emulators and files into this front-end system and it really makes emulation really simple if you have a Mac. And not only are we able to play older systems like the Super Nintendo Entertainment System or the SNES, we can also play PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation and portable games too and today I'm going to show you how to get all of this set up. We're going to be installing OpenMU, we'll be setting up the games, we'll be pairing a Bluetooth DualSense controller or any other controller and we're going to be setting up the BAS files for more advanced systems like the PlayStation 1 and we're going to get all of these games working as well as possible on the Mac. So here we're going to go to the OpenMU.org website which I'll leave a link to in the description and we're going to press the download now button here to download the latest version of the software. So click allow, it's going to go into our downloads file. Folder. So this is the latest version of OpenMU. This is OpenMU 2.4.1. In terms of updates, it's pretty new. In terms of updates, it's pretty new considering the fact that the last major update was in January 2021. So it's nice to see that this has been kept up to date. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go to Finder. Then we're going to go to our downloads folder and then double click on OpenMU 2.4.1.zip. It's going to extract the application. I'm going to drag and drop this into our applications folder. So once that's put there, we're going to go ahead and scroll down until we find OpenMU. We're going to double click on this and if it says it can't be verified press cancel and then hold down the control key on your keyboard click on the application and then press open and then we have the option here to open manually so this application is opening now and uh, if you look at the window in the background it's asking us to give permission to receive keystrokes press open system settings and then we're going to toggle on this option and then type in your password and then we're going to click quit and reopen if for whatever reason it doesn't reopen then just go back to applications and double click again and now we're going to go through the setup process for OpenMU. So here we're going to press the next button and then here are the system calls that we're going to select. So we're just going to let everything install, press next and then press go. So if we maximize this and the interface is really straightforward. If you want to add a game, it's really simple. I've got a bunch of games listed here, for example, and all you need to do is to drag and drop them into this folder here and then it's going to automatically download the cover art so you can easily double click and then launch the game. So I've added it here launch the game and it's ready to run. So the interface is really intuitive. You can use this button here to save the save state. You can load save states from the same button here. We can also change the scaling, which is going to improve the look of the graphics. 1x is quite small, but 4x is probably closer to what we want to look at on a modern screen. We also have access to things like cheats, which are already built in. And we can also set things like shaders. So I can make this look something like a CRT, classic CRT screen. So if I select that and then press play, this now looks kind of like a CRT with the kind of dithering. You can also try something like CRT Geom, which gives this uh, kind of warping effect, which looks really cool. So the next thing that we need to do is to basically configure controls. So here we're going to go to open and mute and settings, and then we're going to go and configure our controls here. So what's nice is that you can configure these per system. So I'm going to go to my Super Nintendo emulator here, and then we're going to make sure that we have an input. So Within Apple settings, I'm gonna pair my Bluetooth controller. So this is a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. Each controller is gonna be pairing slightly differently on a Mac. However, to put this in the pairing mode, we just hold down this button here and then hold down the home button until this starts to flash. So you can see the LED here has started to flash here. And then on the Mac side, you can see here, there is a DualSense wireless controller appearing under nearby devices. Press the connect button. And this is now connected up. You can see here that the DualSense LED has turned a solid blue light. So that means it's all paired up and ready to go. So I have a DualSense wireless controller, which I've connected up via Bluetooth on the Mac OS side. And then now under controls, we can now switch to PS5 DualSense Wireless and it's automatically bound all the keys correctly for our game. So here, that means that we can basically go into OpenMU and when I load up Super Mario World, this is now gonna work correctly. So I'm using the controller to play the game now and that's all working properly. So you can see here that Super Mario World works great on the SNES part of the OpenMU emulator. So this is all working fine. However, there are plenty of other systems that you can try too. So for example, Sony PlayStation one. So many systems are going to require additional files. For example, if you wanted to run PlayStation 1 games, then you're going to need to go and configure the system files. So just go to OpenMU, go to settings, and then under system files tab on the right here, 
we need to make sure that these are all ticked. So we need to put the BIOS files in the correct place. So in order to do this, all you need to do is to download a BIOS pack. If you do a search for OpenMU BIOS pack online, you're gonna find all of the BIOSes that you need. We can basically drag and drop them into the OpenMU folder here and it's gonna automatically go ahead and import all of the BIOSes that we need. So once that's done, what we can do is basically add PlayStation games. So for example, I've got the game Tekken 3, which is a PlayStation 1 game. I'm just gonna drag and drop this into OpenMU and it's gonna automatically download all of the game art or the metadata for us and put it into our PlayStation 1 section here. And now we have Tekken 3 ready to go. So because we've installed the BIOS, this is going to be able to run. And because we've entered the PlayStation 1 BIOS, then this is also going to launch. But we need to configure controls too. So I'm going to go into Sony PlayStation and make sure that we have input selected as our PS5 controller and that all of the settings are set up there. So we can double click on Tekken 3 and then that's gonna load up. So you can see here Tekken 3 on PlayStation 1 part of OpenMU is working pretty well. Now, one thing that you might notice is that we have a lack of scaling options and widescreen hacks and things like that. And the reason for that is because the OpenMU cores for all of the advanced systems, for example, Dolphin for Wii and GameCube, as well as PSP for PPSSPP emulator and also PlayStation 1, all have quite outdated cores and they don't have the customization options that you might be used to. Therefore, if you wanted to find out more about a bit more complex emulation, then make sure to check out the links in the description for individual emulators. For example, the emulator Duck Station can render this game at a much higher resolution with far more options, and it has more advanced features as well, which is gonna make the way that this game looks, especially on the Mac, even better than before. Also, you should look at individual emulators like PPSSPP, which perform far better than the OpenMU core. So make sure to check it out in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.